All right, we went to SHOT Show 2019. Let's go over what we saw. We got Tony, we got Chris here. We're gonna go ahead and start off with Tony. Tell us about that Type B. So while we're at the range, we were able to shoot the Archon Type B. Shot very well, has a unique locking block, codenamed the AF Speed Lock. So with that, it also has a lower bore axis and allows you to stay on target much more consistently. However, we would like to spend more time with it and also shoot it compared to other polymer guns in this category. Yeah, that's uh, my only gripe with this gun is its MSRP of 850. Uh, it does come with four mags if you're in the heavy mags. Which, who is it? But uh, it is an expensive gun. It did shoot really well. Uh, we were reviewing the footage and it we had a bunch of hits. I guess you're watching the footage, so we need to talk about how we reviewed it. So, Fight Light, belt fed machine gun, pretty cool. Um, I don't really see a benefit of it on the civilian market because most people have semi-automatic firearms and belt fed. Uh, yeah, it's a lot heavier and you're only going to get one round at a time. Now, if you got an M16 or an auto sear, then yeah, it'd be pretty bitching to have. Yeah, it's one of those cool things. I, I was, you know, I thought it was neat uh, until I found out the price. And uh, it's Yeah, it's with an MSRP of $4,414. Kind of stings, but hey, if you got an M16 machine gun transferable, then hey, that's pretty cheap. Yeah, that's if you have a full auto lower, then it's probably worth checking out. Mm -hmm. uh, the SCR is something that I've been looking to shoot for a, a long time since it came out, like way back in the Ares uh, defense days. And I was glad to finally get my hands on it and shoot it. And I actually ordered one, so I ordered one of the lower kits. It should be in in the next couple of days, and uh, I'm gonna throw an upper on that and and ring it out and see if I like it as much as I think I will. You got any plans on your configuration, barrel, handguard? I it's I'm gonna put my favorite AR upper onto it. So uh, at this point, it's running a Faxon 20 inch flame fluted barrel, uh, and it's mostly standard parts. They're well broken in because it's been shot a lot, and uh, that should be should be a cool setup to start with. It's got a little little pulled one to four power scope on it, so uh, we should have some videos of that coming out pretty soon. So then we made our way over to Kimber and we shot the EVO 9. Um, I was hitting pretty good with it, but I did have a hang fire, which was quite odd. It was my first hang fire ever. Um, That's, we're calling it a hang fire. It's some kind of... It went click. And some then sort of uh, negligent discharge. A second or two later, it cooked off. <laughs> yeah, it was it definitely is a weird thing. I was filming him at the time, uh, and... I registered that he stopped shooting and thought there was some kind of malfunction, uh, and then it kind of just. Like, At first, I thought maybe my glove caused the problem, but clearly in the video, it sounded like it clicked, and then it fired. Yeah, you definitely hear a click and see him, uh, you know, look like he's firing around, and then kind of bring the gun back and it fired at that point. Yeah cool thing that I like that Kimber's bringing out this year is the K6 revolver in the three inch variant with an exposed hammer. Uh, and that's kind of what I've been waiting for ever since they announced they were making a revolver. Uh, and I think it's gonna be a real cool range gun. Uh, I'll probably end up getting one because I dug it. But uh, later in the footage, you'll see another revolver that's probably gonna top it. Springfield M1A, Chris, <laughs> you need to tell us about this M1A. <laughs> So there was, a, there was a, a rifle range set up. It was, must have been a thousand yard range. It was a really long range. They had an M1A set up okay. with a so scope where, on some crazy for? high mount. And it it looks like a Vortex? Vortex. Yes, yeah, it's a Vortex, a Vortex uh, scope on you know, some kind of M1A mount. And uh, had a stainless steel barrel. Uh, maybe it was one of their match grade. Yeah, I think it was a, uh, one of the... Super match? Yeah, I think it was one of the match grade, the national match or whatever. Uh, but it was definitely like, you know, the full, 20 whatever inch barrel match grade uh sweet gun just you know it was heavy and the chin weld the chin weld was real so uh, well, i think they got different grades of it and that particular one did not have an adjustable cheap no it was the old school like grand style style so uh after like five minutes of me fiddling with it and finally settling on a chin weld on top of my hand on top of the rifle ryan got tired of filming and uh <laughs> Hey, you can only stand there with a camera for so long. So the, the guy was actually joking with us that like, you know, it sighted in, you know, zero for 500 yards and told us where that 500 yard line is and kind of joked about, you know, good luck with the wind. It was really windy that day. 
and uh, I actually walked it on for a couple hits and surprised the guy and had the first hits on the steel that day. Uh, so I was pretty proud of that, but uh, unfortunately we didn't film it. We did get footage of Tony uh, not hitting anything. I couldn't hit anything, man. <laughs> it was very windy. That's some guns speak to people, some don't. Now, I did go shoot the 1911 from Springfield, the TRP, 6-inch barrel, 10 millimeter. It had the RMR on top of there. I actually was really impressed with that gun. Uh, a lot of people talk bad about 10 millimeter 1911s. They say that they're a little too snappy. Um, I have shot the Glocks, and the Glocks are super smooth, but I felt that that TRP was butter smooth when I shot it. Uh, yeah, that's it's not my cup of it's tea. It's not cheap. <laughs> I mean, you could definitely probably buy three Glocks for the price of that thing. <coughs> yeah, that's. I'm not into 1911s. I'm not into dots on pistols. Uh, so for me, it was a lot of things I don't like. I do like 10 millimeter, and I'm a Glock 20 fanboy. Uh, and I was impressed with the XDM in 10 millimeter. That was. I think that's going to be a good hit. Your XDM is a win. Go buy it. Unless you have a Glock 20, and that's probably better. I'm going to try to get them in the same place and shoot them both. What about the 911? The 911 was amazing. The 911 answers a bunch of questions that I had forgot to ask. Check it out. It's got tons of grip traction. I love it. G10 grips, G10 trigger. It's got awesome sights that are like completely unconventional and like Ryan didn't like them at all. I couldn't hit the side <laughs> of a barn with that gun. I love the gun. It's, it falls under one of the categories for me of kind of like a gun that I love a lot and I probably never get around to buying and owning. Uh, but I'm going to try my best to uh, keep my eye on it and get one. When, uh, when they're available because like it is a cool gun it's pretty lightweight it's nine millimeter small package you know all those classic things you want in the nine good traction good sights and i shot it well so i like it i, think I felt like the win. gun was a little too blocky it is a little blocky but i mean that style it's basically like a cult mustang type you know yeah, it's like a that mustang type of gun or a sig uh yeah, like the SIG uh, 938. 938. Yeah. Yeah, it falls into that kind of category of 1911 ish mm -hmm. handguns. So it's going to be heavier than the polymer guns and uh, a little blockier. But I think overall it's a win. The guns are getting so small now for the 9mm that they're all kind of getting squarish. Yeah. Because they're like pulling in the dimensions so close to the round mm -hmm. itself. Uh, so I think blocking it definitely, is. Definitely uh, pushing the boundaries on the 9s nowadays. It's definitely a small 9, yeah. I remember the days where like you had to go to like War Bar and Sea Camp to get tiny metal guns, and now like everybody's got one. So yeah. uh, definitely. But they're all cool polymer to too. So this one is an all metal gun. Yeah. yeah. Speaking about an all metal gun, this might be an old classic, but now it's new again. The Walther PPK and PPKS. I'm really stoked that they're bringing them back. Really they come back in stainless and in blue. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's cool guns. They had a, uh, a PPKS out at uh, range day, so we got to shoot it. It shoots like a Walther. It's uh, everything I love about my own PPK. Yeah, I mean, I got one myself. I got a blued one, uh, West German, and I love it. So I'm glad that Walther came out with these. Uh, I get questions about this all the time, about how to get a Walther PPK. And I'm like, hey, look, they just don't make them anymore. And now they do. Yeah, the only slight hit I have on the gun is it's just like the Smith & Wesson uh, imported ones. It has the serial number that's like laser engraved. Yeah, that it looks is kind a little of funky. cheesy. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, my favorite one at home has that from Smith & Wesson. So, I mean, it's not a deal breaker. That's the only criticism, and that's, you know, I consider that minor. Yeah, uh, a lot of guns nowadays, they're putting all this stamping and go read the manual or caution this. Yeah, there's nothing crazy on and it. Uh, and they have changed the sights, so the sights are actually going to be a throwback to PPKs of older times. Uh, so they, they're going away a little bit of like the modern Smith & Wesson interarms kind of error PPK to an older style sight. Uh, and that's interesting, pretty cool too. I think that's a good niche to uh, you know, get people to buy them that already own the guns. Mossberg, finally handgun is this their first handgun so i went to the mossberg booth which so is funny because we at range day we get to the mossberg booth and there's like nobody there and it's like this awning with nothing happening you gotta walk all the way back so our, in the distance. our initial reaction was like oh man they packed up and went home 
And then we saw them, they were like 50 yards down range, like right on the burn. <laughs> it was like, and, uh, they want you to hit something. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they made it a uh, Feels like a gun. kind of a, a, a can't miss situation. Yeah, the which MC1. Was good. I didn't miss, yeah. so I liked it. I appreciate that Mossberg. Uh, the MC1, he's a great gun. I went there basically really to see impressive. it fail. I was hoping for the best and expecting That's the worst, and uh, I think they That's did a good job putting it together. It shoots really nice. It's is awesome. I'm, I'm big enough really to be comfortable, report. small enough the to be carried. It kind of like checks all the boxes. Uh, I, it to the, uh, to the I think it's going to compare well to the Glocks uh, and the XDSs. It's going to speak my Glock. It takes Glock mags. Cool. We'll yeah. Oh, you go on their website and doesn't say nothing about that. Yeah, that's... uh takes Glock 43 mags. That's pretty cool. I mean, why not? Why wouldn't you do that? I mean, they already make a good mag. Why not just use it? Yeah, it's a good mag, and a lot of people already have them. I think that's going to be a good selling feature in the long run. All right. I want to do a EDC check. What do y'all got carrying today? EDC check? Yeah. Where you do the whole thing? Yeah, what you got? All right. So. I'm not carrying shit. You want to go first? I'll go first. <coughs> So I'm not prepared for this. He's springing this on I us. know, curveball. <laughs> this is a good one. So uh, I got kind of my always watch, which is an Avant uh, automatic Tropic 300 diver. Uh, trusty old Benchmade Griptilian. Uh, this is the uh, Doug Ritter blade in S30V. And I got Wilkinson grips on them. So that's pretty neat. Got a uh, Streamlight micro stream. The old cell phone and oh, I even have a multi tool. <laughs> Leatherman yeah. squirt. Leatherman, P yeah. PS4. There we go. The tiniest multi tool, and of course, a tiny gun. Gotta have the so, pug. North American Arms pug. <laughs> <laughs> so which one's the primary? Probably the knife. Yeah, I'll go with the knife too. <laughs> Full sport. <laughs> Tony, what you got? I have nothing on me today. Oh, okay. I'm actually coming from uh, a retirement party, so we had a few cocktails, and I don't carry one. All right. Well, that's a smart assuming, thing to do. But I do have my uh, AR excuses, in the vehicle, excuses. and also a machete. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we're not talking about trucks. Yeah, we're talking everyday carry. What you got? I'd be here all night. You open my truck up. I have my cell phone and a vape pen. <laughs> <laughs> I got a flashlight, Pelican. Nice. Let's see. So we can see. I can see. Oh, that's not the one. Are you I do that have a, a multi chain thing? knife. I think oh. that's a Swiss tech. It is. Got a knife, got a <coughs> screwdriver. I could probably saw some rope with that sucker. I don't know. And then I got a Kimber. Nine millimeter. Appendix carry. Appendix carry. You're gonna shoot your dick off. Right. I got five eleven <laughs> pants on, man. <laughs> shoot That's your dick off in style. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have no keys, Tony? You can't like punch them in the face? Oh yeah, I forgot. On my keys. I have a key bar. I have a four sevens rape whistle. I wish they would make these again, this titanium rape whistle. Yeah. Good one. Only rape twice since you had that. Stuff. I have not been raped at all <laughs> since I've carried that. Which is a game changer for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to range day. What were y'all expecting to see? So the first, the, the highlight of my day is I checked the weather when we landed in Vegas and it was supposed to be like 61 degrees and sunny at range day. And that was wrong. <laughs> so I showed up. Oh, no, we were so wrong. I showed up in shorts and a t shirt with an emergency hoodie in my bag. And we got out of the bus and there was like. Must have been 30 mile an hour gusts. So that was, you'll see in the video footage. It was windy. Here, and it was a cold, like freezing, horrible wind. Kind of it clouded up. It got so cold. It was miserable. Uh, a lot of people were caught off guard at Ring Day. There was only like four dudes dressed for that. Now, me and Tony went last year. And it wasn't that bad, like at range day, it wasn't super windy. I, like it was a little chilly, but once the sun went down and we were waiting to get on the bus, boy, did it get cold. But hey, you're in the desert. Of course it's gonna get cold when the sun goes down. Yeah, with that, we're very thankful for the free beanies that were given away last year, but unfortunately nobody had free giveaways this year. 
We got you know, coupons you, for free coffee, coffee but, they but ran by out the time coffee. we got there, the coffee truck was the coffee gone. Coffee truck was gone. <laughs> they ran out of coffee. It was so freaking cold. <laughs> yeah, apparently everybody cashed in their free coffee coupon. Sup? Clock. I know all you block fanboys out there. Like, come on, tell me about that 43X and that 48. Well, well, we actually got them in the store right here, so we can play with them. I was actually going to Glock to kind of like downgrade them about this time. But then I actually started talking to a guy at Glock and he was telling me the real reason why they came out with this gun, which was quite interesting to me. I wish they would have marketed it this way. He was telling me that they were going after the markets for states that had round capacity limits of 10 rounds. So they're going for those states so that they can bring these guns in. Well, that's it's this gun, right? Not that gun. Both of them both. Well, I thought that was the 48, was that? Both of them are 10 round capacity only. Yeah. They both take the same mag. Now with the 48, it's the same length as the Glock 19. So instead of them shipping Glock 19 to the states with mags with like plugs in them, they can just ship these. Then we went to Hudson. <laughs> Man, were we so excited about Hudson. This booth here, well, Chris, tell us about the booth. So, first, I mean, Ryan, after not seeing them at range day, was lamenting that I didn't get to shoot the gun. He didn't get to shoot the gun again. He's ready to place his order. We got to go talk to Hudson. I so mean, 2018, I was ready to buy. Day one. Who do I give my credit card to? It's like the third booth that we tracked down that day, which was dumb because we started on the second floor. But anyway, we hiked through the dungeon to find this place. We walked up and down the aisle, too. Yeah, we were walked like, past Wait, it we a couple times. Passed it up. So then we went back down the aisle. Yeah, I had and then the, we finally had found the app going, couldn't find it. So each booth had like a little paper uh, a little placard sign or something, or something on the ground saying the booth and the number. Well, we finally found it. Yep. Empty. Yep. Not a soul. Got didn't show up. We we're like, well, maybe they show, they're going to show up late. Late entry because they got the, the <laughs> baddest I was, gun. I was trying to give them hope. I kept telling them maybe they're late. Maybe they got lost. So the rumors on the interwebs, uh, accordingly, they're in some type of lawsuit uh, with a, a partner parts company that they hired to make some parts for the firearms and they weren't up to their standards. So now Hudson's not paying them and they're suing Hudson for unpaid bills. And apparently they just ran out of money. They ain't got no money left. Yeah, it definitely doesn't look good for Hudson's. It looks like it's pretty dead in the water. But I got some good news. I ordered a Hudson for myself. <laughs> <laughs> now I wanted the H9A, but unfortunately they've never shipped any of those, so I ordered a H9. Yeah, it's a little heavier, but at least I'll get my Hudson fix at home. And yeah. it's rare. And we'll probably do a YouTube video on it, and hopefully it will break so we can talk all about it. But when I was looking online, you, you hear about all these people that say that their guns break. Only found one YouTube video of a guy's breaking and his firing pin broke and it was slam firing, which, I mean, that means he had a machine gun at that point. And another guy broke his because he reloaded his own ammo and he had a squib and he followed up that squib round with another round and bulged it up. Not a good look. So those are the only two people I found that actually showed their guns breaking. Okay, worst case, we'll make a video about machining new parts for Hutchin. So, I mean, if the firing pin breaks, yeah, we can we can start a whole video on just getting some tool steel and trying to make the firing pin. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see what comes of that. Stay tuned for a video about the gun that you can't buy because the company went out of business. <laughs> so we got a new gun. Remington so Tag 13. <laughs> what you think, Tony? <laughs> so the Remington Tag 13, those remember that market that coming that at 915. Don't think about it's the shotgun, semi-automatic, but it also comes with the dove head grip. Fortunately, didn't have any out at range day for us to shoot it, but I'm very curious to see how that one comes out to market and how people um, accepted it to the market. The only thing is it does come with a high price tag, a little over 900. So it's a little bit high, but I'm very curious to see how that gun shoots when it does finally release and we get our hands on it. I think it's definitely a niche market. Uh, more people that just want it as a novelty thing. So that Colt King Cobra. I finger banged it on the shot show floor and it was amazing. I really liked it. 
I yeah. didn't shoot it at range day for two reasons. One, I want to buy that Kimber K6 three inch and I didn't want to ruin that, which it probably would have after feeling the trigger on the thing. Uh, and then reason number two is I was freezing cold. It was towards the end of the day and I was over it. And I went into the, the heated tent to warm up a little bit. Well, Tony owns the Kimber K S6 and he knows what that trigger feels like. Yeah, but then we cold python. We shot that. Yeah, you got the cold python, and we went and shot that cold king cobra, and that thing was badass. Yeah, so how do you how do you think it compares? Yeah, it shoots very well. Being um, the revolver, I was very surprised. I originally thought that the demo revolver was a little bit broken in. However, when we were at shot show itself and we played with the newer gun that was not fired, um, the trigger is very, very impressive. It was sweet. If they come that sweet out of box, this thing's gonna be a hit, like you won't believe. Yeah. Uh, price point's not that bad. I think it's uh, right around 900 MSRP. So you can probably pick them up for about eight at a local gun show. Night Force. Night Force. Yes. <laughs> Mine was blown. Should've not went to the Night Force booth. Some of their new first focal plane stuff is mind blowing. Some of the reticles and the way that they the way they magnify and the information that you get at different magnifications is really impressive. And I'm talking about the the ATAC R, like the high end ones, the highest end ones. Uh, they have a one by eight that really impressed me. And unfortunately, I'm probably gonna end up having to buy it. It's near three thousand dollars retail price. That's the biggest bummer about going to <laughs> Night Force is you find these amazing optics, and then you find out the price tag. And you want to cry yeah it's one of those things where like i was amazed to see it and then i kind of at this point i wish i would have never looked at it yeah it was pretty cool i was probably better off living life without <laughs> knowing about it but they definitely their first focal plane stuff and their some of these new reticles they're coming out with are really really impressive now caltech they had the ks7 which was a whole lot lighter than the ksg also in price i was looking it up the MSRP is four ninety five on them suckers. I think the KSG is at like eight hundred bucks. I mean that's pretty cheap and it's a lot lighter. Let's see, it comes in at five pounds, a little over five pounds. I mean it's not too bad for a shotgun. Yeah, I I think the weight and the price is more in line with the traditional shotgun, traditional pump gun, uh, and you yeah. get the added benefit of it's a bullpup, so you have a much long, uh, shorter overall length. Now it is capable of adding on a longer extension tube if you want to put more rounds, but I think seven rounds is plenty for a defense shotgun. It's, you know, round about normal. Yeah. What's an 18 inch barrel? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that's normal for an 18 inch barrel. Yeah. What about that CP33? The CP33 was a curveball that we weren't expecting to see. So we were standing in line at the Keltec booth at range day waiting to, to shoot a couple things. I wanted to shoot the RDBS again. Uh, that's another gun that I love, but I'll probably never end up buying. Uh, but the CP33, we were watching a couple guys shoot it, and I was kind of convinced that it was some sort of pistol version of the CMR30. Well, I think at first we thought maybe it was an SBR, but then we were like, well, there's no stock on it. Yeah, I thought it was either something like either an SBR or a pistol version of the CMR that you could SBR yeah. or that would have a brace or something. It yeah. kind of had that look to it. It ended up being the CP33. Uh, which is a competition 22 long rifle uh, and it, it shot really well. So the gun at range day was shot a lot and in true Keltec fashion it looks like they have one prototype that has like a billion rounds through it. Uh, they're running it super wet. I mean the thing like Ooh, one pound one and a half pounds. I think it's light. Pound and a half? So what is that in ounces? That's uh, 16, 16 and 8. And eight. <laughs> 24. <laughs> 24 ounces. There we go. <laughs> holds 33 rounds. Yeah, so uh, they're claiming it holds 33 rounds, thus the 33 nomenclature. Uh, at SHOT Show, they were loading them to like 10. It shot great at 10. Uh, clear mag. Clear mag, clear so mag. you can see how they're screwing up. Yeah, they were saying about yeah. Uh, rim lock. Yeah, there's, <clears throat> they're like a pretty straight mag for a 22 long rifle. Doesn't really quad have any stack. curve. Yeah, it's they quad stack. They love talking about that quad stack. It looks pretty crazy. Uh, either it's going to be innovative and amazing, or it's going to be a cluster and not work well with fully loaded. So we'll let them wait and see how that pans out. I'm sure it'll be around. And what's this? This is 2019. So, so 2021. It'll hit the streets around 2028. 
ish oh, somewhere. Okay. Yeah. At an MSRP <laughs> of four seventy five, <laughs> which we all know it will most likely be inflated. Yeah. Hopefully it'll show up at some point. It does look like a cool gun. It shot really well. Uh, I don't compete in, compete in anything that would use that type of gun. I don't know what kind of competition that would actually fit into. I don't know. They were saying that they brought it in for the competition. Yeah, they market. designed it for some specific game that I have never seen played. Yeah. So I don't know. It'd be cool for a kid playing Steel Challenge or something. Uh, or it might be a little big for hands for a kid. Kind of a little bit chunky grip with a quad stat magazine. Yeah. But uh, it's definitely cool. You could always count on Caltech. They had that thing hosed down with some oil. Out. Yeah, they had a whole can of ram oil in it <laughs> when they handed it to me. <laughs> I didn't know if they were selling me a that gun or... That thing was dripping wet. Or lubrication. <laughs> but it did shoot. You know, it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. And of course, we shot a bunch of the other Caltech stuff. The you know all the classics. They make cool stuff. All right. Speaking about cool stuff, Tony, tell us about that DD. Cool stuff. So we were able to check out Dan Defense's new bolt action rifle, the Delta Five. So we're gonna go ahead and add on to the footage that we took at Shot Show from Daniel, one of the engineers there at Dan Defense. We're going to actually do a quick little uh, deep dive into the Delta 5. We have one with the stock over there that I'm sure y'all get plenty of B-roll of. But I wanted to bring this up to show you that our, our bottom metal has actually integral pillars that go up against the flush mini chassis. And that round bottom receiver goes into the mini chassis. So that right there makes sure that environmental, humidity, all those concerns are taken care of. You can actually see the integral recoil lug right there on that round bottom receiver. And then our recoil lug actually is a 360 degree recoil lug goes all the way around the receiver. That way when we put our base on, it actually pushes up against that shoulder. We know that scopes want to move forward, so do bases. So this makes sure that you don't have an impact shift or a point of aim uh, shift. And then probably the more important thing that y'all are looking at is this right here. This is our barrel nut. So if you wanted to change from 6.5, 308, 7 millimeter R8, those are the three calibers we're launching with, you would just simply remove the two main bolts out of the uh, stock, leave yourself with a barreled action. We, we supply you with a wrench to break this off. Undo the, uh, the barrel nut, take it out. There uses an ex uh, extension that you'd slide a new barrel in, tighten it back up, place your barreled action back in your stock, tighten those two bolts up again, and you've just swapped from 308 to 653. Thank you, Daniel. Absolutely. I love Daniel Defense, and I always wanted a bolt action gun, and now they satisfy my needs. Interesting, Ryan and I were kind of looking at it. We were taking a bunch of B roll uh, before we talked to one of the I don't know, engineer guys, and uh, we were both kind of like, hey, it looks 700-ish, it, yeah, it's another clone rifle, okay, yeah, it's cool, it probably costs too much. Uh, and I after, mean, Chris, a big bolt-action, long-range shooters. Granted, uh, that like, being said, each of us have guns that are expensive yeah. and ridiculous and tricked out. So, I mean, we are not exactly in the market for yeah, a new Yeah, we weren't bolt in gun. the market. Now, uh, Tony, he's a big Daniel fan, so <coughs> like Daniel, I think he might be in the market for that. Yeah. Yeah, I have to see the, the true street price on it to see what it's coming in at. Right now, they have an MSRP of twenty one ninety nine. So after hearing uh, Daniel's explanation, I'm a believer. I mean, the gun has a lot of cool stuff that... It's got some cool features. It's got that, things that are, you know... That most people don't think about for a long-range gun. They're deeper right. than just surface when you look at the gun. Uh, the, the recoil lug, the 360 recoil lug that ties into the scope base. The base mount, yeah. People like, don't think about that. Those things move a little bit. That that alone is cool, and then the idea that they have you know a barrel nut system. I was kind I thought it was kind of hokey that they did the barrel nut thing uh, with caliber swaps, but after seeing how everything's put together, uh, I think this might be if you want to do that route, this might be the gun to take you there, because uh, there's no adjustment. Everything's machined to fit. All the time it is or you know machined into the parts. So you don't have to do any head spacing or anything. Mm -hmm. These are just slap on, tighten it down, torque it. Uh, they throw the barrel nut tool in the box, so that's a win. If you're gonna have proprietary crap, I like you to throw the, the, the tool the in, tool in the Arrow box. Arrow Precision does it when you're Arrow buying one of Arrow is really good about that too. Um, Which Arrow Mid Precision- Midwest uh, Industries does it too. Yeah, Arrow Precision even throws in those little flag, like torque wrench things Oh, the too. torque wrenches yeah. are so cool. Those are neat too. They come with all they their work scope so bases well. and their hand guards and stuff. I got those in all my toolboxes. <laughs> uh, best and worst of SHOT Show. Who wants to go first? Go ahead, Chris. 
probably the highlight of SHOT Show as well as my life. <laughs> Let's hear about it. We're at the Springfield Armory booth and they had candy. So I'm like, hey, I like candy. I'll eat some candy. And I was, you know, it's a little, had a little, I wasn't at the hangover yet. I was still drunk from the night before. So uh, digging through, see what kind of candy I want to get Skittles. One of my favorites, vegan candy. Grab a bag of Skittles and I'm like, oh shit. We need to put this in some compartment in a gun. You got to. <laughs> when so, you have an AR, you got to have a place for your Skittles, right? <laughs> so we made a beeline to the closest AR with a with a uh, pistol grip with a, a compartment thing. in it. With a little put door. Put Skittles in. Yeah, a little compartment for your Skittles. And we put Skittles in it right there on the SHOT Show floor. Yep. And I ate Skittles out of an AR-15. Nothing wrong with that. It's pretty good. That was the best of SHOT Show? Yeah, that and we saw a Sasquatch. <laughs> Did a lot of drinking. We had a fun trip outside of SHOT Show. SHOT Show was a little depressing. SHOT Show, I wasn't, de it was depressing for Ryan because uh, right, Hudson didn't I show up. Yeah. <laughs> I was I'm very upset about that. <laughs> Had Hudson showed up, SHOT Show would have been awesome. Probably would have been cool. <laughs> but anyway, he was bummed that Hudson didn't show up. I couldn't order my H9A. There wasn't an overwhelming amount of new stuff that we were interested in personally. Uh, you know, we walked in new products well, you section and, Chris, and everything. Uh, you and Tony ordered guns. <coughs> yeah, we you did. We, we bought a couple of things. Uh, both have fight light. So uh, I ended up, I came home and ordered a tactical, tactical solutions rifle after fondling them all at SHOT Show, which I kind of already wanted that. Same thing with fight light. I already was well, interested in Well, you knew in you in wanted a tactical solution, but you kind of forgot that you wanted a tactical solution. Probably. And then yeah. you played with it and you were like, what the hell is taking so long? <laughs> yeah. So I expedited that, got that in the inventory. Uh, and then uh, at Fight Light, the SCR has been on my radar for a while. I didn't want to buy one without getting a chance to at least handle one. So I got it's to so shoot hard it. so to find. Yeah, I finally got to shoot one at range day. So I uh, I pulled the trigger on that. And then he got the new 9. Do you even remember what that is? The MCP. The MCP. So it comes with the brace. Um, has a 4-inch barrel on it, threaded. So I'm going to be running a suppressor on it. I like the look of that. Yeah, it's got a yeah. sick, like, handguard barrel nut yeah. thing. So it reminds you of those old uh, SMGs with the, like, yeah. the, the heat shield covers right. over it. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty slick. Cool. Uh, my probably best <coughs> and worst of SHOT Show. Worst is definitely that 6 tower copperhead. That is one ugly ass gun. I, I can't why see Why is it not threaded? Need. Yes. <laughs> And it's just... What is the thing? I don't know what the thing on the front is. <laughs> what is it? It's deflowered. It deflowered. hurts. It, it hurts I can't my take eyeballs. it off. <laughs> like, I know Sig can make good guns. I own a pretty bitchin' P226. Yeah. So I know they can make nice guns. Great handguns. I have an MPX that I like. Uh, but, I mean, the Copperhead was kind of... Copperhead. Like, ugh. I don't know where uh, they're going with that. SP Tactical came out with some cool new braces. Uh, especially for the MP5, where... It, slides right into the receiver yeah people have been asking for that forever we finally came out with that uh ptr came out with a k model of the mp5 um i'm not a big fan of the k model i like just a traditional eight inch barrel uh five inch it's a little too short for me i'm too worried about my hand getting shot uh a gun that we missed the taurus tx 22 16 round 22 long rifle pistol Striker fire. I don't know how we missed that. We I, went to the tourist booth. We were booth. in the tourist booth for some time. How uh, did we miss that? We probably missed it because I was trying to do that double locking revolver thing with one yeah. hand for 20 minutes. I mean, it weighs less than a Glock, uh, 43, and it holds 16 rounds of 22 long rifle. I don't know why more companies don't come out with small 22 pistols that you can just put in your pocket. Yeah. Not only did I miss that at SHOT Show, that's a surprise to me right now. I got it right here. Completely. We got a whopping MSRP of 349 which kind you know it's a tour. It's sort of pricey for a tour, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Top of the line. It's probably going to come in at like 250 Now, Taurus makes a cool gun for not a lot of money. I think they have a lot of options. You know, if not everybody can drop nine hundred dollars on whatever the new salient thing is uh so i mean for tours well, i to think come a lot in, of people want like loads of pocket 22 pistols well not it's even, like not even just the 22 a. but yeah. like they're they're slim nine and 
Ford full size. The G two uh, yeah. comes in very similar in size to the uh, the Sig P three sixty five. Yeah, and that holds twelve rounds. Yeah, I mean they make a lot of cool guns that are overlooked just because they're like affordable. Uh, but they make some cool guns that are nice. Uh, no, I'm not gonna lie. Their customer service is kind of the worst. I've yeah, there are it. some downsides. I had a tourist years ago that needed parts, and you know, it's they won't ship you a part. You got to ship the whole gun, which yeah. a lot of companies do that nowadays. But yeah, yeah. I, I think more companies need to make 22 pistols about the size of Breda 21A. I'd like them in polymer because they'll be much lighter. Yeah. I don't see why. I didn't even take metal ones. Ruger, like... look into that. <coughs> Caltech, what are you doing? I'm gonna call out Springfield Armory because I like your 911, and that know. would be a cool 22. I can't see them making it. They won't make it, but that would yeah. be a cool 22. What are they making 22? I don't think they. I don't, make they don't make anything. nothing in yeah. 22. Why are you <laughs> calling them out on that? Because the 911 is a cool gun. Loretta, like, what are you awesome doing? 22. You used to make a 21A. Well, I know you still got it on your website, but let's let's be honest, you haven't made that in four years. Yeah, 21As are cool. We both own them. Yeah. We both own threaded ones. <laughs> They're so cool. <laughs> We're pretty One far down the road. One of the best hole. suppressor hosts. We're making a different video. Yeah. This is not supposed to be. Best worst of shot. Best of shot was cocktails. Flowing. There for a kind of mini vacation. But also got to see a lot of new innovative products from all the different manufacturers. And also could see a bunch of friends that, you know, you only see at SHOT Show because we are all over from the United States. So it was just kind of like reunion and a little party and had a great time. Yeah. Worse, probably the weather. I uh, wasn't a big fan of the cold. Um, well, the weather for range day definitely. Range, range day, day was the worst. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it wasn't too bad. And kind of even at night when we're walking around, you see a lot yeah, of people. Yeah. The, the Sunday night was awesome yeah. weather, wow. and then uh, Monday for range day was horrible. Monday right. night when we were out tearing out the strip, tearing up the strip, that was really it was really cold and was, windy on the strip. Yeah. But overall, I had a really great time, and I look forward to many other shot shows. Sasquatch. <laughs> All right, we got a swag pack giveaway from SHOT Show. We picked up a whole bunch of swag. We got one question. Whoever answers it first wins the swag pack. Y'all want to tell them about the question? Did we decide on one? <laughs> we're going to throw, throw up this picture of uh, these matching tattoos. So tell us who you think out of us got matching tattoos during SHOT Show. Two of us did. One did not. Only, two of us. Only one will win the swag pack. <laughs> I'm gonna sum it all up. Shot show was too cold. I didn't shoot very well because the guns were too big. They were also too small. They were too pointy and they were too grippy and not grippy enough. But that Type B you shot well. I thought you'd been practicing. The Type B was pretty cool, but it's way too expensive. Along with that belt fed upper. That's ten reasons why Shot Show sucked. Why would you want a belt fed upper anyway? <laughs> I don't know. I had a, a 1919 for a while. So you went home <laughs> and you Googled yeah. what are those uppers. I was, and I you was, were like, fuck oh, that shit. I was at SHOT Show. I was like, wow, that's dumb. I'd never buy that. And then I flew home and I was like, shit, I might buy one. And then I realized that I wasn't going to buy one. What were you going to do with it? <laughs> I don't know. You know you can load a magazine and put it in, right? Yeah, I don't have any good answer for that. I just thought it looked cool. I thought right. you like lightweight. I thought they that were like the purpose, $1,200. Right? Still too much. 1200 bucks would be way too much. All right, so subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. We're out. Come to the shop. Peruse our selection. <laughs> <laughs>